Okay, so we are now at the stage where we have figured out the parental stress function. So the idea is solve del squared of del squared a, so del squared of del squared a equal to 0. We will worry about the boundary conditions a little bit later. Right now we want to solve this and then we can find sigma xx is a comma yy, sigma yy is a comma xx, sigma xy is uh, a comma xy. This will satisfy everything. I reduced it to finding del squared del squared a equal to 0. So the question is how do you do it? How do you satisfy del squared of del squared a equal to 0? There are roughly uh, three analytical methods for doing this. Okay. So the first analytical method is by using uh, polynomials. This is kind of painful uh, because you have to do a lot of calculations, but nevertheless you can do that. The second one is complex variables. Complex variable technique is really fantastic, awesome, absolutely phenomenal. You don't have to solve anything. No equation, no differential equation, nothing. You can just write down solution after solution after solution after solution without even thinking about it. Okay, this is an amazing technique. The third one is Fourier series. Fourier series, again, easy, beautiful to do. You have to do lots of calculations. These are the three analytical methods. There are lots of numerical methods because you, go, you mean this is a fairly common equation to solve. So there are lots of numerical methods. Okay, so let's look at the polynomial method because that's actually fairly simple to understand, but uh, difficult to do because lots of algebra. The complex variable method, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but after that it is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so how does uh, uh, the, uh, what is that, the polynomial method work? I'm just going to tell you the highlights. What you do is you start out with a nth order polynomial. So, capital N tells you what's the power, maximum power. So, it's a n x, a naught x to the n plus a 1 x to the n minus 1 times y, a n y to the n. That's all. So, what happens is, if I add the sum of these two powers, I will always get n. And so, I can write it as a i x to the n minus i, y to the i, i goes from 0 to n. So you take this, plug it into the differential equation, del squared psi. So this is my polynomial, I do del squared of del squared of pn, that will give me some other polynomial. If you differentiate polynomial, you get another polynomial. This polynomial will be 4 orders of magnitude less. So you will get this. Okay, this is not, I have made some typo here, so let me fix that. So this is not actually correct. So let me fix that a little bit. So this is actually um, really uh, uh, summation i equal to 0 to n minus 4 b i x to the n, um, n minus 4 minus i y i. Okay, so there's a minus i missing there. Okay, now let's blow it back up. So, and then it turns out that the bi's are related to ai. If you differentiate that, you'll get b0 is n times n minus 1 times n minus 3 times blah blah blah, you'll get something. Okay, then, but the thing is, this qm must be equal to 0 because that's our condition. So, let's make sure we write that condition down. This must be equal to 0 for all x and y. So, b i should be 0 for all i. That's how it works. So, write down any polynomial you like, differentiate it, I mean calculate del squared of del squared of p and try to set the coefficients to 0 so that you can satisfy del squared of del squared equal to 0. There is nothing to it, no? It is a pain. So, I will show you for with an example so that you will see how this works.
So let's say I choose m equal to 5. This is my fifth order polynomial. P5 equal to a naught x to the 5 plus a1 x to the 4y plus a2 x blah 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 blah. Substitute. Calculate del squared of del squared p naught and you'll get q1. This must be equal to 0. I want you to understand this is not an equation for x and y. This must be equal to 0. So let us make sure and I write it down. For all x comma y. So how do you make sure that that happens? The coefficient have to be 0. So the coefficients being 0 corresponds to this. So I got coefficient equal to 0. So I got two equations. So if I eliminate it, this polynomial P5 turns out to be satisfied del squared of del squared of P5 equal to 0. So this will be a Airy stress function which satisfies the compatibility equation. From this you can calculate the stresses. And because of linearity, if you generate lots of these functions, you can mix and match. You can add, subtract, all kinds of things. And it's beautiful. So, for example, if I, let's not start with fifth order, it's a pain in the neck. So, let's start with second order. So, P2 is A0 x squared plus A1 xy plus A2 y squared. Hey, that's easy. If you do del squared of del squared of P2, then no restrictions on the coefficients. The stresses gives you, notice, uniform. So, A2, so notice, a1, so there are three constants, a0, a1, a2, so this should be, sorry, um, this should be a0, that's not a1. So let me write it down properly. That should be a0. So what happens is, Anything for which um, you can get any constant stress state by picking A0, A1, A2. So this is very useful for adding and subtracting constant stresses. So whenever you want to add or subtract a constant stress from something, add this area stress function. Very good. So there is no restriction on the coefficient. Now you try the next one, A cubed. And again, this time, you will start getting linear variations in stress. And linear variations in stress should tell you it's something to do with bending. Right? So, constant stress, simple extension, simple shear, simple compression, that kind of stuff. If you do um, cubic uh, up to A to P3, you will get bending. Okay? So, that's again useful. But still kind of boring, no? So, let's try something more exciting. We are going to satisfy something that looks like a nice cantilever beam. So first time we are looking at a full cantilever beam problem. This is actually one of the one of the Saint Bernard problems, but for plane problems. Okay. So I have a beam and I have loads here, and we are going to do a systematic approach because this is what we are going to do all the time. So first thing to do: choose coordinates. It is much better to start with your coordinates from the free end and not from the built-in end. This will make your life a lot easier. I will tell you that straight because we will be we will have to calculate coefficients by putting values for x and y. It is much better to start from the free end. Okay, very good. So I start that, and we are going to list the strong boundary conditions. Boundary conditions which have to be satisfied point-wise, and we are going to do top and bottom. By the way, if you want to do polynomials. Oops. 